Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sergeant Cheetos and in today's video, we're doing the final evolutions of the six Pokemons you guys chose for me to draw. And I just want to thank you guys for the support you guys have given on the last two videos, which have been the two most successful videos I have put out. And I hope you guys are excited because by far, these six drawings are the best drawings that I have put out on my channel. So if you guys do enjoy it, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys can stick around for more dope content as well as so you guys can get a chance in participating in these subscriber draw videos. And if you guys do want to participate, also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Sergeant Cheetos. The link's going to be down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the slideshow of the first two stages of each Pokemon. Now let's get started. Yeah, and up first is our little mud ball Shrek. Let's go ahead and turn him into a bulky boy. Alright guys, let's get started. So we're going to follow my patented formula of creating Pokemon, which is first stage is Q, second stage is the forgettable middle school stage, and the last one is the adult badass phase. So first thing I wanted to do was turn Shrek from a little adorable little mud bun to a big old bulky boy who's ready to knock out anybody who steps into his swamp. And yes, that includes you, donkey. Get out of my swamp! <laughs> And just in case his big old staggering size built like a football linebacker isn't enough to scare you off, he hurls large boulders at you if you take a step into his swamp. So, I don't know man. If we would recreate Shrek, Donkey would be our floor mat right now. <laughs> Some of my favorite features that I enjoyed on this drawing were his feet. I really really enjoyed the way his toenails came out. I know they look kind of gross but I think they're pretty fitting. And as well as his mud outfit made him look like a giant luchador like Andre the Giant. And let's go ahead and wrap up this drawing. Let's go ahead and throw him into his environment. The oh king of the swamp is home. And on to the next one. And up next, we have our boy Magneto, which we decided would be a ghost dark type. All right, let's get started. And for the final stage evolution of Magneto, I decided to open up his cape and unleash the wrath underneath it. I decided to take away that look of aloof that the first two evolutions had, that they just looked like wandering ghost Pokemon. And this time, I decided to make him look terrifying. I wanted to make sure that if you encountered him in the Poke World, that he immediately instills fear in you. I wanted to bring back that feeling of terror that you get in the first gen Pokemon games in red and blue. When you go up to the tower and you find out that you're fighting an unknown ghost Pokemon, or in other words, a dead Cubone. <laughs> I mean, what was that all about, Nintendo? I was like seven years old playing red and blue and you find out you're fighting a dead Pokemon? you find out that the Pokemon you're fighting can actually die? In today's generation, that would have automatically earned itself an M rating for that video game. <laughs> Anywho, some of my favorite features that I enjoyed in this drawing were I absolutely love the way the Shadow Ball came out. I look like it came out very 3D-ish and I felt like it popped right off the screen. As well as the wings that I put on the helmet, I feel like that looks very fitting to the 90s Magneto. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let's throw him into his Pokeverse. Alright, on to the next one. Yeah. And up next is our adorable little purple headed monkey, Trunks. Alright, let's get it. What I really enjoy about doing these drawings for you guys and digital drawing is being able to capture for you guys my sketching format so you guys are able to see what's going through my head as I'm formulating what I'm trying to draw. You guys are able to see all the different positions that I try out for him until I finally capture the one that I feel like it's perfect for the character himself. Which for Dragon Ball Z and Trucks being from that universe he's obviously a fighting type Pokemon so I decided to put him in an action pose since in the first two as you guys can see on the left hand side he's more on the defensive stand and then as a little one he's just excited to be himself. So now I'm putting out his mastery form on full display. As a matter of fact we're going to give him his own move called the Fury Kick that way he can go full Liu Kang on everybody. <laughs> yeah I know. All these references, man, make me feel old. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this drawing. Let's go ahead and drop him into his world and on to the next one. And up next is one of the most deadliest assassins, the cutest little bunny you've ever seen, Wraith herself. All right, let's get it. All right, then quick tidbit. So I don't know about anybody else, but whenever you're drawing, do you try to stylize the pose like you do it physically yourself in real life and then you reference your own stance and draw it? Or is that just me? <laughs> I don't know if it's weird that I was doing this pose in my living room, but hey, I'm happy with the results. 
<laughs> Honestly, from all the drawings that I did for the final forms, this is personally my favorite drawing that I did. And a major inspiration that I took for this pose was from Grant Gustin, the GOAT of the Flashes. That's right, I said it. I wanted Wraith to be the fastest woman alive. I wanted to lean into that characteristic that she can teleport in and out, but instead of... Uh, making her psychic I want to make her electric so it could seem like she's zooming in and out which is why I modeled a little bit after the flash which you guys know if you guys ever seen the flash whenever he's running so fast it basically looks like there's alternate versions of himself running right behind him so I decided to lean into that and I thought it looked pretty awesome in this drawing and I really enjoyed the way the ears wrapped around her neck came out it kind of looks like a little racing scarf I don't know I thought that looked pretty dope and of course I had to keep it consistent with the other drawings and I had to make sure that the lightning was wrapped around her so you know this girl going fires and control if you're listening I have somebody who's ready to chase down your boy Kenshin let's go ahead and put the final touches and drop her off into her world and on to the next one and up next we have the coolest little dude coming up our boy Katsugi Bakugo alright let's get started one of the toughest challenges I had in doing Katsugi Bakugo was deciding the pose that I want to put him in I know since he does shoot fireball out of his hands I wanted to make sure to make that a prominent feature in this drawing to make sure to focus around the flames since his character does revolve around shooting flames out of his Mega Man arms. And after so much trial and error I finally was happy with this pose that I did right here where he's going to be shooting fire out of both arms. And as well for Katsugi Bakugo that he does wear a mask when he's wearing his costume I well wanted to incorporate that into the drawing. So I made sure to add that onto this final form which I was very happy on the way it came out. I felt like it didn't look tacky and I felt like it looked pretty fitting along with his character. I did manage to somehow add that spiky yellow hair that he has and as well the hair on his nose. It just overall adding that extra pop of white took it to another level. Another aspect of drawing this character that I had a little bit of trouble in was not only in his pose but the way I was going to draw the flames. The first set of flames I drew I didn't really like. I thought they looked pretty cool but they weren't just fitting with the style. They looked like two opposite different styles and I ended up trying three different ones till through trial and error I ended up with these ones which I felt looked very natural. And we're going to go ahead and put on the final touches and drop them into his Pokeverse and on to the next one. And last but not least is our boy the Goblin King aka David Bowie. Alright let's get started. And if you're just tuning into this series on this video on the final evolutions. For those that don't know the reason I'm making the Goblin King into an owl is because when I was looking him up through his Wikipedia. It turns out that one of the things he turns himself into is an owl so I thought that would be perfect and fitting with the Pokeverse. Just because there aren't too many owl Pokemons I think there might be two maybe three. And in the overall style of the Goblin King where he wears his white suit and he has big yellow hair. I felt like that would be very fitting with this Pokemon. I very much like the way it came out with the feathers and the tail and just overall even the neck feathers that are puffing out to incorporate those colors that he uses. Although the Goblin King is dressed a little bit more simpler than all the other characters, I felt like his was the most satisfying just because I got to take all those simple features and add them to one Pokemon and make it look nice and elegant and I felt like the overall evolution from baby all the way to its final evolution this was the most satisfying just because overall I felt like this was honestly the most beautiful Pokemon that I drew as well as one of my features that I enjoyed that I draw it on him was making that magical aura around him and adding those like little pixie dust that way you guys know he's a fairy flying type I just overall enjoyed this Pokemon so let's just go ahead and drop him off into his ecosystem and let's let him live peacefully. Alright all right, guys thank you so much for making it to the end of the video and right here I'm going to go ahead and have a slideshow running of the characters we were converting into Pokemon. And you guys let me know down below which of the six were your favorite and if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to smash that like button as well as make sure to subscribe to my channel so you guys don't miss awesome content like these videos as well as so you guys can participate in videos just like this one. And I'll tell you what if we get to 30 likes on this video we'll go ahead and do another subscriber draws video Pokemon edition. So before you click off my channel make sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys are alerted when I post up that prompt on my YouTube channel. And until next time guys. Peace.